is what up Don Mafia and in today's video we're about to be touching how the Buffalo Bills beat the Buffalo Bills and starting right now And to be honest with you, Don Mafia, I was almost over that lackluster performance that happened this past Sunday, but then I started watching the highlights, and not only do I feel the need to face an entire bottle of bourbon, I'm pissed off all over again. I have come to the conclusion that in week one, the Buffalo Bills beat the New York Jets. Week two, the Buffalo Bills beat the New York Giants. And in week three, the Buffalo Bills beat the Cincinnati Bengals. And finally, week four, the Buffalo Bills beat the Buffalo Bills. I mean, we shot ourselves in the foot. Missed opportunity after missed opportunity after mistake after mistake is the exact reason why the Patriots are 4-0 and the Bills are 3-1. And, and it pisses me the f off. And as I'm sure you know, I was in Buffalo this past week. And let's just say that the tailgate was a f blast. But that was unfortunately the only highlight that I had that day. So I want to start this video off with the negatives and then we'll end with how we have nothing to worry about. And now we all know that I'm the president of the Josh Allen fan club. Love that dude. And I even defended his past turnovers week one through week three. But frankly, ladies and gentlemen, I've run out of excuses. And so the only realistic thing that I can blame is Josh for these. Terrible, terrible decision making. There were so many opportunities where he could have thrown the ball away or even taken the sack to put our team in a better position to win. It's funny because the exact same thing that makes Josh Allen the great player that he is, it also is the cause of all of his struggles so far in 2019, hero ball. Taking care of the football is so necessary for us to win these games against good teams. And you know, it pisses me off too, because finally we see that a Bills offense makes adjustments during halftime and looks like an entire different offense. He drove the ball downfield and he ended up putting six on the board for us. And it gave me hope. And then of course that bullshit hit happens, which leaves us questioning if Josh were to finish that game, would we have come out on top? So the conclusion of all of this is, is Josh Allen a bust or do I think that he should be benched? No, because I'm not a pussy. If that man was behind center during that fourth quarter and played all 60 minutes, there is no doubt in my mind that we would have won that game. I mean, it's honestly, he just becomes an entire different quarterback it's when he's under pressure and he's losing. We would have won 17 to 16, but unfortunately, We'll never know. Let's pray to God that he is healthy for week five. And so now you might recall me saying that our O-line has improved significantly throughout the off season. And for the most part it has, well for half of it. The Patriots exposed how weak half of our O-line was this past Sunday. Josh and Matt Barkley were running for their lives for the entire 60 minutes which in my opinion may have played a very important factor on how many turnovers that we had this game. I mean, we have to figure something out. And I mean, it's whether that we just decide to start Ty Neshecki and let Cody Ford develop. Regardless of our decision-making, we need to make some moves fast because when we play a good defense, we're gonna be seeing similar struggles. And so I was re-watching the game once it was all over and once I cooled off. And when you look at the missed opportunities that we had, we would have won that game 27 to 16. Now I'm talking about the drop pass from Zay Jones, the would-be touchdown pass from John Brown, and Hoshka's missed field goal. And all in all, we had several missed opportunities that would have made us 4-0 say that we would execute. As far as Zay Jones is concerned, his time in Buffalo is over. He's had three years to improve, and drop after drop after drop after drop 
he's not a good fit for our offense. Maybe he's a good fit for somebody else, but it's time to put him on the trade block, throw away a couple of draft picks, and get us somebody that can actually compete. In worst case scenario, let's just call up my boy Duke too. I guarantee you that man would have caught that pass from Barkley to put us up 17 to 16, I promise you that. And now if I had to identify the single play that caused us to lose this game, it's this. And I mean, sure, say that Josh were not to get sacked during that exact same drive, then there might have been a different outcome. But our special teams has to recognize trouble. They have to. We were set up to fail before the ball was even snapped. And I'll tell you what, say that that punt were to go off, by the way that our defense was playing and by the way that Tom Brady looked like the 42-year-old that he actually is, they would not have scored. And the game would have been an entire different animal. Were there mistakes? Yes. Is our season over? No. Don't be a f***ing idiot. Guys, we still have a very, very, very good football team that has a real shot in not only making the playoffs, but going deep into the playoffs. Frank Gore has absolutely went off the season so far. 36 years old and still making defensemen mess. And we identified another weapon in the past game, TJ Yeldon. Yeah, he can't be a running back because he fumbles the out of the ball, but that man has some hands and he can get us some points. Dawson Knox is still an absolute stud and our defense is championship caliber. I mean, how many defense can hold Tom Brady to a less than 50% completion rate and a 40 something QBR? Not many. Thing is, is that our defense has demonstrated that they can keep us into any game we play from here on out. And we just need to fix a couple of key things in our offense and we're gonna be dangerous. Now let's just cross our fingers that Josh Allen can clear protocol before week five. And if not, Matt Barkley needs to show up. Like I'm talking like Matt Barkley versus the New York Jets show up from last year. And then, then again, of course, we have Devin Singletary hopefully clearing his hamstring injury by week five as well. Guys, I know that it's easy to be pessimistic about the season after losing to our rival, the New England Patriots. We hate them, we do. And you know what, it's very easy to think that our season is over, but it is not, guys. We are a good ass football team. Our defense is going to carry us throughout this season, that's for sure. We have nine to 10 new offensive players this year. It's gonna take time for them to mesh. Josh Allen needs to stop making stupid decisions. It's not the end of the world. We're gonna go into Tennessee next week. We're gonna bounce back. We're gonna win four to one. We're gonna go into the bye week, rest up, get healthy, and then slaughter the f***ing Miami Dolphins. We will end up six and one before week eight. And hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in to yet another edition of the Dom Mafia Report. I am going to put out a preview to the Tennessee Titans game, probably around Wednesday or Thursday. Be on the lookout for that. If you want to support the channel, please visit my Patreon. Uh, this is exactly how that I can continue to make these videos for you, these analyses. Feel free to go ahead and support the channel that way. If not, say that you want to buy some merch. You can find that link in the description as well. You can see a bunch of customized Don Mafia stuff. Um, we'll love it. If not, regardless, I really hope that you enjoy the videos. And we'll see you next one. Go Bills. Go Bills.